He is in control. Just like in the book of Revelation, it, it seems like the beast even has control over the saints, it says in the book of Revelation. But do not fear, God is in control of it all. Nothing passes your way unless the Lord approves it. And if He approves it, it's going to work good in your life eventually. You keep trusting the Lord. So He is coming back. The Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout. Now as we're back in Revelation 14, we pick back up in verse 17. Then another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven. He also had a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar who had power over fire. And he cried with a loud cry to him who had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her graves are fully ripe. So the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and threw it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. And the wine press was trampled outside the city, and blood came out of the wine press up to the horse's bridle for 1,600 furlongs, about 200 miles. That's a lot of blood, isn't it? And this is also a gathering, a gathering of the law. It is a physical gathering of the law. And, you know, they used a sickle to gather the wheat. You know, a, you know, a long pole with a sharp hook on it to cut that wheat. But are you supposed to gather grapes with a sickle? No. Well, if you get a grapevine with the sickle, you know what you're going to do? You're going to destroy those grapes. So here, a sickle is being used to gather those whose trust is not in the Lord Jesus Christ. God is long-suffering, wills that none should perish, but He must bring judgment eventually. Now, Jesus received judgment at the cross. And you can be found in Him if you trust in Him. And He, the wrath of God was poured out upon Jesus. But if you refuse that sacrifice Jesus made, you will experience the wrath of God. And it's called, all through the Old Testament, the wine press of the wrath of Almighty God, the great day of the Lord. So a symbol is used here to gather these grapes, and this judgment is, is uh, to gather up their bodies, and their bodies are destroyed. In verse 20, it says, up to a horse's bridle, which is four or five feet, depending on the height of the horse, for about 200 miles, and that is a lot of, that's not a big old ridden. Those of you who watch horror movies, you haven't seen nothing yet. I mean, this is going to be horrific. And you see, they made their choice. You know, you have a choice. The Lamb of God hung on a cross. The sinless, perfect Lamb of God, and He poured out His blood. He gave His life's blood. His blood was shed. That was shed on our behalf. So you have a choice to be bathed in the Lamb of God in His blood and be washed from your sins and be forgiven of your sins and be found in His righteousness or you can bathe in your own blood that cannot ever forgive any sin. No matter how much blood you shed, it will never forgive your sin. You have a choice. Which one you'll bathe in? Here, they're bathing in their own blood. It's a horrific, horrific scene of that much blood. At the battle of Armageddon, that we will get to. But when Jesus rides out on that white horse, and all of us, I hope you can ride a horse, we're going to be riding with him, and he's just going to speak a word, and it will be done. The great wine the wrath of God. You know, in John chapter 15, you want to 
you turn there with me this morning. John chapter 15. It also talks about a blind. Jesus said this in John chapter 15, verse 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abide in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out of the branch, and is withered, and they gather them, and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. So abide in Christ. These great here in Revelation 14, you know what they're about again? Everything that is anti-Christ, whether it's self or pride or worldliness, idolatry, whatever it may be, that is what they're about again. And they will be harvested with the sickle from the Lord. Or you can be about again Christ in this morning. And be found in His love and His righteousness and in a personal relationship with Him. It's called being born again, being saved. And you will bear much faith, which is being a witness. Where do you abide this morning? Is it in Christ or in the world? Another example of this great artist here in Revelation 14 is in one more passage of Scripture. There are several Old Testament passages that describe it, but the one I want to share with you is in the little book of Joel. Joel chapter 3. Joel chapter 3. Give me a moment. It was in my Bible this morning. It was still in there. Oh, I found it. Joel chapter that speaks of this great day of the Lord, of this coming judgment. And this even speaks of the same battle. What a history this valley of Megiddo had in the Old Testament. It's called the Valley of Jehovah. It is, it's in this valley that many, many things happen. The Holy Himself says that is a perfect field for a great battle. The plain of Megiddo. And that's where the battle of Armageddon will take place when man, one last attempt, takes his fist in God's face and says, I can do it by myself, but I don't need you. And God said, That's enough. That's enough. But here in Joel chapter 3, verse 12, it says, Let the nations be wicked and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. Put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come go down, for the wine press is full. Now you know what a wine press is. That's, that's where they put those grapes in that bag, and they nearly stomp those grapes to get the juice out of them. To make something like a little fermented grape juice so that they can drink not become sick. So that was what a wine press was. But here this is a this is a wine press of the wrath of God. It says, Come go down for the wine press is full, the batch overflow for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes, and the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon will grow dark. The stars will diminish their brightness. Who just spoke about that? The Lord. The Lord did in Matthew chapter 24, speaking of this judgment. Verse 16. The Lord also will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. The heavens and earth will shake, but the Lord will be a shelter for his people. That's where our hope is found. Amen. He is our shepherd.
himself in the strength of the children of Israel, the strength of the people of faith, our hope and trust is in him. But this is a valley of decision. Some of you are in a valley of decision right now. Some of you uh, are following Jesus. Some of you may not be. Some of you can decide this morning in this valley of decision that I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm through with following self. I'm through with following the world. I'm, I'm through with following everything that is anti-Christ. I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to abide in Christ. I want, I want a relationship with Him. I want to repent of my sin and turn to Jesus today. And I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Or you may decide to follow yourself. The blind leading the blind is what Jesus said. To follow the world system, the Antichrist, the beast. The valley of decision. During this last judgment, when things, the, the, the great big description of the bold judgments have been poured out, in that valley, all the decision making is gone. They're under judgment. Right now, it's still great. Right now, God is still extending His long suffering that none should perish. All should come to the end. The decision is yours. Who will you follow? Will you follow Christ? Or will you follow anti Christ? Let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for your precious word this morning. Oh, the, the warnings, the prophecies, all that has been given for us to simply read and believe. We thank you, Lord, even for that grace, Lord, to allow us to have a Bible in our hands or the Bible put on the walls of the church even now. Thank you, Lord, for this grace. Oh, I pray that no one will refuse your grace and mercy this morning, but that they will decide to follow you and be found in you and be found in your righteousness. I pray, Lord, your Holy Spirit will live in our hearts and lives during this time. May we tend to eternity for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'll be here to help you during the invitation. If you'd like to receive Christ or make it public, you, you may have already accepted Christ. If you just want to make it public, call them to leave your baptism. I'll be here to help you in any way I can. So would you please stand as we send an invitation to invite you to respond to the message.